Ritual battle began. Then the crowds fell back before the CS gas. Units waited behind the army barricades, ready to launch an arrest operation. They were members of the 1st Battalion of the Parachute Regiment, known to be one of the toughest regiments serving in Northern Ireland. Just before four o'clock, they were ordered in. Most of the rioters had dispersed. Shooting had begun when a soldier opened fire on an alleged nail bomber. In all, 108 rounds of live ammunition were fired by the army. They just came in firing. There was no provocation whatsoever. Uh, they, firing what, rubber bullets? No, it was lead bullets they fired. Uh, they seemed to fire in all directions. Uh, there were some rubber bullets too. They didn't even seem to fire gas. It, it was just, it was completely outrageous, disgraceful. I, I don't know. It's, uh, they, you, call, they call themselves an army. It's utterly disgraceful, I are think. You, are you quite sure that, that nothing was fired at them first? There was nothing fired at them first. I'm absolutely oh, certain of that. I can speak of this uh, without any difficulty whatsoever because I was there. I was just standing at the flats when the Saracens moved in, first of all, and there was nothing fired at them, positively nothing fired at them whatsoever. There weren't even stones fired at them. People ran in all directions and they opened fire. Most people had their backs to them when they opened fire at the time. A short while ago, we filmed you leading the way with a, with a, white, with a white handkerchief. Yes. Uh, for a, um, a party who were carrying a boy who was dead or dying. Now, how was he shot? That little boy was shot when he was running away. Uh, he, he was just a little bit behind me when he fell. I heard the shot. I looked around. I saw him dying. You saw him? Yes. And he was shot. He was he a was, young man, wasn't he? He was a young boy. I would say about 15. But 
and thereabouts. He, he didn't have a weapon? No, he, he had was nothing. He was, just, he was just a young boy at 15. He was, he was running. I was running too. Colonel, once the paratroopers went into the bog side, there seemed to have been a very large number of casualties. Well, I suppose large, uh, five is quite large in these circumstances. It's unfortunate. But when we got up there, past William Street here, where we're standing, and uh, up towards Rossville Flats, uh, we came under fire. Uh, we came under fire from the bottom of the flats, from the flats. We were also petrol bombed, and uh, some acid, in fact, was poured on us from the top of the flats. Local people are saying that you used excessive force when you went in there. Well, what is force? If you're being fired at, you return fire, and they know that perfectly well. How many gunmen do you feel you've hit in the bog side? Well, I'm told from my quick sit rep, you must understand it's a very quick sit rep, that three gunmen were hit. We have not got the weapons, but this is the usual thing. We saw people come forward. I'm not going to say that I saw weapons taken away, because I don't know yet. I have not spoken to the men on the ground, although I was forward when the shooting was going on. You have no worries about this action? None at all. Thirteen Catholic men, seven in their teens, had been shot dead by the army. Thirteen more were wounded. What really happened that day remains contentious. A government inquiry concluded, none of the deceased or wounded is proved to have been shot whilst handling a firearm or bomb, but added, there is a strong suspicion that some others had been firing weapons or handling bombs. The London Derry coroner differed. The army ran amok that day, he said. It was sheer, unadulterated murder. Nearly all the dead were shot in the back. In the days that followed, British policy in Northern Ireland was questioned. In Dublin, angry crowds burnt down the British Embassy. In America, influential politicians made distinctly hostile speeches, and in England too, grave concern was voiced. As the dead were buried, there was further polarisation between the two communities. Nationalists, rejecting British rule and its agent, the army, felt a grief mixed with rage. Unionists feared that the backlash might force Britain to be more receptive to nationalist feelings. In the wake of the shootings, there had been protests across the province in nationalist areas, for Manor, Belfast, Armagh and Tyrone. At Aldershot, in England, the headquarters of the regiment responsible for Bloody Sunday was attacked. Seven died. The provisional IRA had announced they would avenge the deaths of Bloody Sunday. Over the next three months, there were 381 bombs, 56 deaths. 27 members of the security forces were killed. Republican violence escalated. Scenes like these, and the belief that the British government was soft on violence, made Protestants demand tough measures. <laughs> 